Thanks to AMD packing a huge number of processing cores into their recent consumer CPUs, we are currently undergoing a big leap in the performance of home computers. And consequently, we're also undergoing a huge leap in the cooling requirements of the aforementioned. This CPU is sucking over 500 watts. Which is why we have this. The Ice Giant oh, Pro Siphon Elite. And I know, okay, okay. It doesn't look like much right now, but stay with me here, guys. This is just a prototype, and I, I, I know it's kind of bulky, but in our testing, it actually managed to beat this. Ridge Wallet is the sleek way to keep wallet bulged down with its compact frame and RFID blocking inner plates. Use offer code Linus to save 10% and get free worldwide shipping today. To understand why this cooler is important, we first need to talk about how CPU cooler designs have evolved as each generation has reached its theoretical performance limits. We started with simple aluminum heat sinks on chips that output anywhere from 5 to 70 watts. And they served us so well for so many years that you might think, well, if some little fins are good, then more bigger fins must be better. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. As you get farther away from the original heat source along a fin, the temperature of said fin will drop. Once that temperature gets near to the ambient temperature, so the temperature of the air around it, no matter how much longer you make the fin, you will get no additional heat transfer from it. So as modern CPUs stretched into the 75 to 150 watt range, or even higher in some cases, thermal engineers turned to what at the time was a much more exotic cooling method, heat pipes. Now, a heat pipe doesn't inherently add more cooling to a cooler. What it does do is transport heat much more efficiently than metal on its own by using both conduction and convection. This is what allows massive heat sinks like the Noctua NHD15 to work effectively. But we've got a problem. Under normal operation, the fluid inside a heat pipe boils, travels through the vapor chamber to the condenser end, where the heat sink fins are attached, and then is returned in liquid form to the heat source via a wick, normally a sintered metal inner layer. Unfortunately, if you pump too much heat into the system, as you well might, given AMD Threadripper and Intel's high-end desktop chips these days can easily output 300 to 400 watts when overclocked, you get what's called heat pipe dry out, where the fluid isn't just turning to vapor in the vapor chamber, but also in the wick, causing it to not return to the heat source, greatly increasing the thermal resistance of the heat pipe. Which brings us to thermosiphons and why this cooler right here is dope as all hell, as the kids say. Instead of using a wick to transport the fluid back to the evaporator, like a heat pipe, a thermosiphon simply uses gravity. And with a little bit of clever engineering, this can be turned into a loop, basically using the evaporation of the fluid as the pump. All of this is nothing new though, and it's actually pretty common in high heat output industrial applications. The special sauce that Ice Giant has patented is some internal geometry here that allows the cooler to not just be mounted on your computer like this, where you know gravity's effects are pretty obvious, but also like this. So in typical use, this plate right here will contact your CPU, the refrigerant inside will boil, causing it to move up into the condenser, somewhere in here, where it will turn back into liquid and make its way back down to the evaporator. This gives you, in theory, two main advantages. One, heat pipe dryout is avoided, allowing for overclocking of super high performance chips. And two, since there's no pump involved, the reliability is greater than a traditional AIO like this one. Now, Ice Giant couldn't say for sure what the reliability is, and they're only planning for a six to seven year warranty, but according to their simulations, they figured this thing should last around 10 lifetimes, give or take. Enough jibber jabber though. Let's give it a shot and see how it stacks up.
So as you guys can obviously tell from the current state of the mounting hardware, the Ice Giant Pro Siphon Elite is currently in the prototype stage of development. But that's actually good news for a couple of reasons. First and foremost of which is that the thickness of the unit is actually going to be decreased from 103 millimeters down to just 30 millimeters. So that's less than a third. And they figure they can do this without losing any performance. This helps not just in terms of making the thing less ridiculously bulky and heavy, but also in terms of performance because, uh, here we go. Ah, it solves an issue where the fans would end up starved by a graphics card that's installed in the top slot here. Now, one thing we expected was that the fans in the top of the case would help out the Pro Siphon a lot, but it turns out they actually assisted our regular air coolers more. Now, our prototype here is also only for Threadripper, but the final version is expected to have compatibility with LGA 11.5X, 2066, and AM4. And that's it. The install process, especially compared to an AIO, is pretty painless. About the same as putting in a high-end air cooler. So we've got three different profiles in here. Stock speed, which is around 250 watts, a 320 watt profile, which is 3.6 gigahertz all core, and 400 watts Yi mode, which is uh, 3.8 gigahertz all cores on a 2990WX. So that is a 32 core processor. Let's go straight to that, shall we? Now it should be noted that our fans are set to max speed on the CPU, just so you know. Well, here goes nothing. Well, look at her go! So Hardware Info has our package power reported at around 385 watts. I can already feel the heat coming off the CPU just from the case fan at the back here. And impressively, our CPU temp, so T-Dye, is just 65 degrees. That's gonna be tough to beat. Wow, that is a darn impressive result. We just, just about cracked 71 degrees. Then again, none of that is a surprise because we already ran a bunch of numbers in a more controlled environment before turning on a camera. Duh. What is a surprise though, is that our Pro Siphon prototype beat not only Noctua's Threadripper specific single tower cooler, but even Arctic's eight heat pipe dual fan monstrosity of a heat sink here. So that's impressive. But of course, you guys have gotta be wondering, what about water cooling? Thing is, unlike a heat pipe, water doesn't have a point where it dries up in the CPU block. Or at least if it does, you have much bigger problems to deal with. So in theory, our thermal siphon should get left in the dust but it doesn't. So our Corsair H159i cooled system managed to thermal throttle at just 320 watts. Though in Corsair's defense, the H159i isn't made for a chip this size and doesn't cover the entire die. As for our EK Phoenix 360, well, it didn't thermal throttle, but shockingly, it still lost. And there's no excuse here because it's as bulky, it's heavier, we put a Threadripper specific block on it, and it even managed to make a comparable amount of noise, if not more. A note on that, by the way, Ice Giant is currently using Delta fans that are, as you guys can obviously hear, far from quiet. We're not sure if these are gonna make it into the final product, but they did say that they're gonna be prioritizing extreme performance over acoustics, so I'm not really expecting this to be a silent solution. Also, guys, I wanna make it clear that we aren't ready to declare the Ice Giant Pro Siphon the best cooler we've ever tested, because I would consider the two or so degrees of difference we've seen to be within the margin of error of our test and our measurement method. And also, guys, we are working with a pre-production model. We don't know if when they slim it down to a third, it will actually perform exactly the same. With that said, I see a ton of potential here because the craziest thing about all of this so far is that the Pro Siphon Elite here is still made of all aluminum for easier manufacturing at these early stages. So in the future, a potential V2 made out of copper could reduce temps a further five to 10 degrees. 
Though it should be noted, of course, that that's only applicable to these very high heat output CPUs. If you're running like a 9700K at stock speed or something, you're not gonna see that dramatic difference. And I think they're gonna have like a passive version for you guys. Bottom line then, should you buy one of these? Well, with the projected price of 130 to $150, I guess I'd give it a pretty big, I guess so, if you want a top tier cooler and don't mind this gigantic thing hanging off your socket. Like it is considerably more expensive than the air coolers that we looked at, but it's cheaper and managed to outperform our AIO, meaning that there's probably an argument to be made for it. So we're gonna have a link below to pre-order the production version, or if you're in Europe, it'll be available on Case King, hopefully in the first half of 2020. Although I did tell them I thought that that was pretty um, optimistic. Big thanks to Katie from Ice Giant, by the way, for lending her expertise in heat sinks for this video. Big thanks to AMD and Intel, of course, for all these new CPUs that they just launched that need all this cooling. So go check out our video reviews for them now that you're done watching. And thanks to me for creating this beautiful segue to our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in business, technology, design, and more. And their premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on must know topics so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and ultimately do the work that you love. Skillshare is more affordable than most learning platforms out there with an annual subscription costing less than $10 a month. And they've got tons of great content. Check out Justin Bridges, a fashion and portrait photographer from New York City. He teaches new photographers the fundamentals of lenses, focal length, and even photo editing. He's got over 50,000 students signed up on his classes, and you can use the promo link in the description to get your first two months for free. So go check it out. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the future of cooling. Maybe. We'll see you next time. Oh, if you want to check out more crazy cooling stuff, then maybe have a look at this video where we water cooled a laptop. It was as dumb as it sounds.